A country where the ruling class seems to thrive on hostility to the West and where much of the population is repressed and living in dire poverty. Iran is now poised to vote in a new president. So what impact could this vote have for Iranians and the international community? Joining me to discuss this is Iranian Nobel Peace Prize winner Shirin Ibadi. She was recognized for championing democracy and human rights in her home country. She now lives in exile and joins me live from Berlin. Shirin Ibadi, many thanks for joining us on iTalk. In past elections, we've heard of political dissidents being persecuted, targeted. What are you hearing now? Those events occurred in 2009. At that time, due to the extreme violence of the government, protests in the streets stopped. But the people are now manifesting their displeasure by different means. And they are showing they're not happy. Shirin Abadi, the people are also scared, are they not? Because in the past, universities were a hub of political activity. And we get the sense here at least that there's a sense of apathy, that youth are too scared to become politically engaged. Our youth are not indifferent, and they are active. That is why today, many of our students are in jail, and others have been expelled from universities. I'd like now to go to our first question, and that comes from the USA. Hi, my name is Bernard Smith. I'm from the United States. How significant is this election? This is something we ask ourselves because could this election be a turning point or with the supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, in power, can we expect uh, just more of the same? These elections are not free, like previous ones. And the final decision with respect to important political issues lies with Mr. Khamenei. In my opinion, the election itself is not important. We must wait and see if, as in 2009, people go out onto the streets or not. Do you think that the voting process is fair. Given that already that the Guardian Council has selected the eight candidates, can we expect that at least to be fair? The current election organization and supervision system, in my opinion, is fraudulent. That is why I've suggested free elections are held under the supervision of the UN. Of course, I know that the government will not accept this. Only international supervision will prevent electoral fraud. Shirin Abadi, we can now go to our next question, and that comes from Spain. Hello, I'm Alethia from Spain, and I wanted to know how the outcome of these elections will affect Iran's nuclear program. Saeed Jalili is considered one of the front runners in this election. He's also Iran's nuclear negotiator. If he were elected, could we 
expect a change of tack from Iran regarding its nuclear program? Whether the winner is Saeed Jalili or someone else, it will not alter Iran's nuclear policy. Because in this area, Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei is the only one who makes decisions. And he will not let the president make changes. There has been pressure from the international community in the form of sanctions. You've spoken out against those. But what alternative does the West have when its negotiating partner is intransigent? Man, ba hamlay nizami be Iran va tahrim. I'm against a military invasion or economic sanctions. Zero, because it causes a lot of harm to people. Instead, the West should adopt policies which directly target those who violate human rights. Instead of punishing Iran with economic sanctions, punish those responsible for violations of state and human rights. Talking of the people of Iran, we'll go now to our next question, which also comes from Spain. Hello, my name's Irina, I come from Spain, and I'd like to know what the real situation in Iran is, because it seems quite complicated. In some respects, uh, Shirin Abadi, our vision of Iran is fed via films like Argo, by the hardline rhetoric that we hear from the ruling class. In a nutshell, what, what's the real Iran like nowadays? The feminist movement in Iran is very strong, one of the strongest existing in the Middle East. Our union movement is strong. Many of our organizers are in jail. We also have a very strong student movement, which has resulted in the arrest and imprisonment of student activists. The Iranians are peaceful because for 34 years they've lived with the revolution. And they also endured the eight-year war with Iraq. This is too much for one generation. So while the Iranians are not happy with the situation at the moment, they want any changes to be made peacefully. They're tired of war, of violence. Finally, you have been a champion of the cause of women, of the repressed in Iran. What's your message to those people? To the people of Iran, you must resist to win your rights. Keep your resistance peaceful and know that victory will come. Shirin Ibadi, many thanks for joining us on iTalk. To find out who our next iTalk guest will be, take a look at our website or follow me or Euronews on social media. Then please send us written or video questions. From the European Parliament studios in Brussels, I'm Isabel Kumar. Thanks for joining us.